Hey guys, it's your girl Elise here and we are back with another episode, actually episode three to our perspective series. And I am super excited for you guys to hear the word that God has placed on my heart for you all and I think it's going to be a blessing. So I'm gonna pray and I'm gonna invite you guys to pray with me and then we are going to dive headfirst and get started. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for what it is that you're doing right now, Lord God. I thank you for the message that you have placed on my heart, Lord God, for the people that are listening um, to, to me speak today, Lord God. I thank you um, for anointing me by your spirit and by your power, and that you would prepare every single heart that is listening today, Lord God, that you would bring answers and perspective to them in Jesus' name, Lord. I thank you that you would speak through me. Um, Lord, that you would give me the words to speak, and um, Lord, that you would just have your way during this time. And so, Lord, I praise you, I give you glory, and I give you honor. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So, guys, today's message title is Be Humble, Sit Down. And you're like, okay, Alicia, that is a song lyric. And I'm like, okay, yes, it is. But it's also the title to my message today. So I'm super excited to share it with you guys. And um, I know it's going to be a blessing. So if you are taking notes, if you're using your phone, or if you're reading from your Bible, I'm going to have you guys to read with me. If you are using from your phone, no judgment, because I'm also reading from my phone too. <laughs> so I'm going to have you guys to um, open your Bibles to 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. And we're going to start by reading. It says, If I shut up the heavens so that no rain falls, or if I command locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence and plague among my people, and my people who are called by my name, humble themselves and pray, and seek, crave and require as a necessity my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear them from heaven, and forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to prayer offered in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified and set apart for my purpose this house that my name may be here forever and my eyes and my heart will be here perpetually. And um, guys, if you are taking notes, your first point that I have for you is humility leads to repentance. Repentance leads to healing. Healing leads to fullness. Because when we turn our hearts from relying on God, we open the doors to trials, hardship, destruction, and attacks from the enemy. And y'all have been looking at what's been going on in our world recently, um, whether it's um, the issues with racism or sex trafficking or drug problems or drinking or societal issues. And I've been asking God, okay, God, what's the part that I play in bringing change to these things? What's the part that I play in literally helping to turn these issues from being a problem to a solution? And I've really been in this place of asking God, okay, God, how do you use me? And God has been speaking to me recently, and he gave me the scripture to start with, and has been showing me that really humility is the thing that is the first step to change. Because in order for you to bring change, change starts with you. And so it says literally right here that if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. And a lot of times we don't even know maybe what's going on in our life. Maybe there's some things that are preventing us from humbling ourselves before God. Maybe we don't even know what it's like to humble ourselves before God. And maybe you're asking yourself, okay, what does it mean to humble myself before God? What are the steps for that? And really, it starts by you recognizing the sin that you have in your life. Turning to God, repenting, and then seeking Him. Because when we start by those three steps... We then open the door for God to showing us who we are and what solution we bring to the problem. And this is all done through Him and by His Spirit. So I'm going to read from the next uh, scripture. And you might be asking yourself, okay, how do I recognize what it's like to not have humility? 
and I'm going to have you guys to read with me from James 4 verse 1, and we're going to read through to 10. Starting at 1, it says, What leads to the unending quarrels and conflicts among you? Do they not come from your hedonistic desires that wage war in your bodily members, fighting for control over you? You are jealous and covet what others have, and your lust goes unfulfilled. So you fight and you battle. You do not have because you do not ask it of God. You ask God for something and do not receive it because you ask with the wrong motives out of selfishness or with unrighteous agendas. So that when you get what you want, you may spend it on your desires. You adulterous and disloyal sinners, flirting with the world and breaking your vow to God. Do you not know that being the world's friend is being God's enemy? So whoever chooses to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says to no purpose that the human spirit which has been made to dwell in us lusts with envy? But he gives us more grace and more grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to defy sin and live an obedient life that reflects both our faith and our gratitude for our salvation. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud and the haughty, but continually gives the gift of grace to the humble. Those who turn away from self-righteousness. So submit yourself to the authority of God. Resist the devil, stand firm against him, and he will flee from you. Come close to God with a contrite heart, and he will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your unfaithful hearts, you double-minded people. Grieve and weep over your sin. Let your foolishness and laughter be turned to mourning and rec let reckless joy to gloom. Humble yourselves with an attitude of repentance and insignificance in the presence of the Lord, and He will exalt you and lift you up. He will give you purpose. And it literally goes back to the first point where I literally talked about how it literally starts with humility. Humility is the first step and then repentance and then repentance change. And when we're seeking God in the midst of wanting to change, in the midst of wanting to do things different, in the midst of wanting to see what's going on in our lives and in the world and in our family's lives and our friends' lives change, God then can give us purpose and solution to the answers that we are looking for. And God wants to let you know today that he has a purpose for your life. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. You're not a speck on the earth. You literally have a beating heart because God wants your heart to beat for him so that he can show you what he has for you. So our second point that I want you guys to write down is God desires to be loved the way that he loves us. His love is for our benefit because we are in need of his love and redemption in order to be what he has called us to be and experience the fullness of the life he provides. God is waiting on us to recognize what is going on in our hearts. God is waiting on us to come to a place of saying, okay, Lord, I know that I am a mess. I'm not anything without you. And I need you to come into my life to make me what you want me to be. And those are all steps that we have to take. Those are all things that we have to recognize. If we're going in a way that is contrary to our purpose, that isn't bringing us into fullness, that's leaving us broken or causing us to be reckless, God is requiring us to humble ourselves before him and say, hey, God, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore, I need you. Because he knows that in that cry to him is the beginning of our journey toward a purpose that he has intended for our lives. God wants us to have fullness, but in order for us to have fullness, we must recognize the things that are going us and preventing us from experiencing what he has for us. So we're gonna move on to our next scripture and it's in Proverbs 18, verse 12. And it literally says here, Before disaster, the heart of a man is haughty and filled with self-importance, but humility comes before honor. A lot of times we're looking for, you know, blessings to come. 
and we're always looking out for blessings. I hear people constantly saying, yeah, blessings, 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 blessings. But when you look at their life, their life is not cultivating a space and an atmosphere for the blessings to come. In fact, it's actually cultivating hindrance from receiving those blessings. And a lot of times we don't recognize the issues that are going on that cause us to be selfish, that causes us to be haughty, that causes us to put other things that we think that are important above not only the things of God, but also the things that other people are suffering with. And all these things that are going on in our life, God wants us to recognize that it's not about our self-importance. Because when we're so caught up with what it is that we want, we cannot recognize the suffering of others. I literally look at what's going on in the world with racism and how that's personally been affecting my life. And it's a shared thing that I can recognize and I can experience because I've experienced that for myself. And a lot of times what we experience and what we go through, we don't recognize that we are not alone in our experiences, but we get caught up in maybe where we are in our life and what we've gone through in our life that sometimes we tune our perspective from seeing the plight of other people and the suffering of other people. And what God wants to do, God wants to tune our hearts back to him through the power of humility, through the power of coming to the end of ourselves so that we could be tuned to his heart because his heart is for broken people. His heart is for the lost. His heart is for those that are hurting, those that are dying, those that are experiencing pain. And God's heart is for you because in a lot of ways we're experiencing those things. You're experiencing these things and you want to make a difference. You want change in your life. But God wants, to, wants you to know that it starts with you. Getting healing starts with you. So I'm going to move on to our next point. And it says, um, When we are in a place of humbling ourselves before God, we create a space for him to heal our brokenness and elevate us. But pride is a barrier to God's healing. If we keep suppressing the things of God, and we keep suppressing the desire that God has for us, the fullness that God wants for us, we create a barrier to getting free from the things that are binding us. And God wants us to be free so that we can step into the fruition that he has for our life. And we need healing because without healing, we are literally broken souls that are walking around with no solution. We can't provide anything to anyone. Jesus is literally the only thing that can not only provide a solution, but can provide healing to the brokenness that cuts deep, that no one can reach. It's not about a guy, it's not about a girl, it's not about anything, any job, any amount of success that can bring peace to your soul. And God wants us to see that without him, we are literally walking around without any solutions. And he's trying to bring solutions into our life so that we can bring solutions into the lives of others that are sharing the same experiences. So we're going to read from 1 Peter 5, verse 5 through 10. And it says right here, Likewise, you younger men of lesser rank and experience, be subject to your elders, seek their counsel, and all of you clothe yourself with humility toward one another. Tie on the servant's apron, for God is opposed to the proud. Again, it is literally saying, God is opposed to the proud. You cannot get anywhere being proud. God wants to elevate us, but if we keep being proud and we keep exercising that, God cannot literally bring us into that, into the fullness that he has for us because it is literally going contrary to his nature. It says right here, God opposes the proud, the disdainful, the presumptuous, and he defeats them, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. Set aside, again, self-righteous pride, so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns once and for all on him, for he cares about you. 
with deepest affection and watches over you carefully. And I'm going to stop right here because there's something very interesting that I keep seeing a trend of in the scriptures that I'm reading. A lot of the reasons why we have pride or why we're not humble is because of the fact that we have anxieties and we have cares that we're worried about. And we have fears. And fears are the things that literally create a barrier to us seeing what God is actually doing in our life. And so if we're worried about how a situation is going to turn out or how this is going to work out, how this is going to happen, what we're going to be, what our purpose is, then we begin to fall into this state of fear. And then we begin to seek our own solutions. And we begin to seek our own way and our own path. We begin to try to make it happen for our own selves. And what that does is that hinders God from being able to move in our life. Because God wants us to come to the end of ourselves so he can say, wait a second, I actually want to show you how to walk down that road. Maybe I want to bring you into something that's better than the thing that you're choosing. Maybe I want to give you a job that I know is going to satisfy the desires that you have but you keep running over here because you think there's something better. And God is trying to show us the plan that he has for our lives. Because our plan and God's plan are two different things. When God's plan is the thing that's directing our lives, it gives us fullness and satisfaction, even when we're dealing with hardships, even when we have cares, and even when we're struggling through anxieties. But anxieties have no rule over us because we can trust in the plan that God has for our lives. So I'm going to keep reading here. It says, be sober, well-balanced and self-disciplined. Be alert and cautious at all times. That enemy of yours, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, fiercely hungry, seeking someone to devour. But resist him. Be firm in your faith against his attack. Rooted, established, immovable, immovable, knowing that the same experiences of suffering are being experienced by your brothers and sisters throughout the world. Again, you are not alone. The experiences that you're going through, someone else is going through. And if God is giving them a solution, there's a solution coming for you. God wants you to know that even in the state that you're in, that you're going through difficult things, that you're going through hardships and trials, God is going to bring you out of them by the power of his spirit. Because if he has called you by your name and he has purposed you for a destiny that he has for your life, he will not leave you to fend for yourself. But God wants you to stand in faith, firm, like it says, immovable, knowing that he is God and beside him there is no other. The enemy has no plan over your life. It won't come to pass. And God has so much for your life. So it says right here, you do not suffer alone. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of grace who imparts his blessing and favor, who called you to his own eternal glory, will himself complete, confirm, strengthen and establish you making what you ought to be. And if you're taking notes again, write this fourth point. Humility is essential to purpose. Humility is the thing that literally drives our purpose forward. Humility is literally the thing that not only allows God to move, but allows us to be what God has called us to be. I can't stress this point enough. God wants to bring you into his fullness. God wants to bring you into the, the destiny that he has for your life. You will be a solution for the people that God has called you to reach. It starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with you recognizing, God, what is going on in my heart? What is wrong in this situation that I'm in? What am I doing that's a hindrance to where you want to take me? And then turning to repentance, turning to God saying, hey God, I need you to help me. I can't do this on my own. And then praying for other people, seeking the face of God, saying, God, how do I be a part of a solution in this area and the solution of bringing change to this brokenness, healing to this brokenness? 
and saying, God, use me for your purpose in my life. God has a purpose and a destiny so incredibly big that not only you can fathom it, the Bible literally says that God's ways are higher than ours. His thoughts is wider. And I'm going to move on to the last scripture. And it says in Matthew 11:25 25 through 30. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. I openly and joyfully acknowledge your great wisdom that you have hidden these things, these spiritual truths from the wise and intelligent and, re and have revealed them to infants, to new believers, to those seeking God's will and his purpose. Yes, Father, this way was pleasing in your sight. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one fully knows except, except for, excuse me, no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son except for the Father, and no one fully knows and accurately understands the Son and anyone to whom the Son de deliberately wills to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and heavenly burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace, and I will give you rest, refreshing for your souls with salvation. Take my yoke upon me and learn from me, following me as my disciple, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and, and you will find rest, renewal, blessed, quiet for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. And if you're taking this last point, write this down. God can fill our voids with his presence when we feel like we, we are at our weakest and we acknowledge it. All God is requiring of us is to come to a place that is the end of ourselves. When we come to the end of ourselves knowing that we are never good enough, we're never good enough to reach God. We're never good enough to be perfect. We're never gonna be perfect, but we're gonna be purposeful. And God knows that. And that's why over 2000 years ago, he sent his son, his one and only son, to die on a cross for our sins so that we could experience life and have life to the fullest. And if that's not a beautiful story, an example of the love that God has for us, I don't know what is. God has a plan and a destiny for your life. And he formed you in your mom's womb. Even though you might be here on this earth and say, okay, God, I've gone through so much. I've been through so much brokenness, so much pain, so much hurt, so much abuse, so many struggles, so many trials. I've messed up. I've done things that I completely regret. How could you have a purpose for me? How could you love someone like me? God knows all these thoughts that you have. And he even says that his thoughts toward you are more numerous than the sand on the seashore. That's any sand in the whole entire world combined on every island. His thoughts to you are greater than that. His thoughts of love toward you are greater than any lie. It's greater than any lie that the enemy has ever told you about yourself. Any lie that you've told about you to yourself. God wants you to change your perspective on how you see yourself so that you can see him in the midst of your struggle, in the midst of your trial, so that you can humble yourself before him and come to a place of purpose that he has for you. So you might be wondering, okay, Alicia, that sounds great. That sounds amazing. How do I receive the love that God has for me? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's as simple as praying this prayer with me. And if you wanna accept Jesus into your heart, I'm going to have you to repeat this prayer with me. Just say this. Heavenly Father, I come before you this day, and I know that I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. I know that I'm broken. I know that I need humility, and I need you. 
I know that I've messed up and I've gone in my own way and I've done my own thing for the longest time. And I'm tired of it. I know, Jesus, that you were born of a virgin. That you are the only son of God. That you suffered and you bled on a cross and died for my sins and the sins of the whole world and that you descended into the lower parts of the earth and defeated Satan and every demon in hell. And on the third day, you were raised to life by the power of the Holy Spirit. And you now sit at God's right hand, praying for me, that I might have life and have life to the fullest. Jesus, I know I'm a sitter, and I ask you to forgive me of my life of sin. I ask you to cleanse me with your blood and I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me, make me whole. I forgive myself and every person that's ever hurt me, and I release them just as you are releasing me today. I ask you to fill me with your Holy Spirit and your fire, and give me the life that you have designed for me to live. Give me purpose, give me a solution for the problems that are going on in my world and in the world of others. I love you, Jesus, and I choose this day to follow you. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your love. I accept you into my heart, and I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Look, if you have prayed this prayer with me, I want you to know that all of heaven is rejoicing for you. The Bible says that when one comes into the kingdom of God, all of heaven rejoices. Literally, a party is going wild in heaven for you because God has accepted you as his own. You're not alone. You have a purpose. You have a destiny. And God is rooting for you. If you prayed this prayer, I want you to write in the chat, say, Hey, I accepted Jesus. What do I do next? Get yourself a Bible and continue to listen to the words that God has for you on this broadcast. God is doing something in your life and this is only the, only the beginning. God has so much for you and it's a beautiful start to the journey that he's destined you for. So subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to like and comment. Again, tell one of your friends or your family, say, hey, I accepted Jesus. And trust me, you're about to be on the journey of a lifetime. And it's going to be amazing. So guys, I love you. Until next time, I will see you later. And again, peace out.